Hello everyone, this is Terry. I'm actually gonna skip the formalities. If you've seen the video before, you know who I am. If not, hopefully you'll stick around and listen to what it is that I'm gonna share today. But I just have a message for you and I wanna encourage you um, to take your eyes off the storm. Take your eyes off the storm. And when I say that, cause I've said it before and I've, I actually do this, I practice it periodically cause it's just extremely important. But what I'm referencing is when Peter went to walk on water towards the Lord, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. He was able to walk on water as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord. But as soon as he turned and began to focus on the storm, he began to sink. And we are sinking right now, you all. There's many of us that are consuming a lot of garbage and we're consuming it nonstop. In this world, it's been statistically proven that we pick up our phones, sometimes for no reason, but the fact that we're so addicted to it, every 15 minutes. It is time to do what the Bible tells us to do. ourselves means we are setting ourselves apart. We are consecrating ourselves. We're setting God apart in our hearts, fellowshipping with him, worshiping him in spirit and in truth, repenting of our sins, seeking his face with all of our hearts. You can't do that and be constantly consuming this garbage all the time because you are being distracted, you are being corrupted, you are being manipulated. And the reason I know that is because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He is the God of this world. So if you're constantly consuming the things that are coming out of the television and out of your phone, social media, Hollywood, etc., etc., if you think that you're not being manipulated, you're sorely mistaken. He is the primary influence for all of these things in our world. So I am the first one that will say we should be informed. But we should not be so caught up and wrapped up in all these things that we're watching and consuming that we believe to the point where we're dividing. I'm right. You're wrong. I, this is what I think. This is what you should think and so on and so forth. That is leaning to your own understanding. And the Bible says trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge God and he will direct your path. So if you decide to do what I am inviting you to do with me and my family, and I call it a blackout, where we turn off the TV, we turn off social media, we get off of our phones, we don't watch movies, we don't e do any of that. We spend our time in the word, in worship, in prayer, in thinking about the Lord, in doing projects and exercises that bring us closer to God so we can worship Him and fellowship with Him. I'm inviting you to do that with us because that's what God wants us to do right now in this time, in this moment. And I know some of you are thinking, well, if I'm not watching the news and I'm not watching what's going on on social media and so on and so forth, then I'm going to be caught off guard. I'm not going to be informed and know what's going on. Do you not realize that if you decide, Lord, I want to spend time with you. I want to set you apart in my heart. I want to consecrate myself. I want to worship you in spirit and truth. Do you not realize that he will place a hedge of protection and a pillar of peace around you? Why? Because he wants the same thing. He wants to spend time with us. His word wouldn't say, humble yourself and pray. Turn from your wicked way. Seek my face. His word would not say that if that's not what he meant. And then there's another passage of scripture that I've said many times and extremely powerful, and I'm going to say it right now. And I really want you not only to hear what thus says the Lord, but I want you to read it for yourself and really pray and ask God for understanding of what his word says. The passage is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, all strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against 
the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. that knows exactly what Satan is up to is God. So if I want to be victorious, guess what I have to do? I have to plug all the way in to God in Jesus' name by the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. It is God that knows the end from the beginning. It is God that knows all. He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Let God be your king. Place him on the throne of your heart and the throne of your mind. I'm begging you. I am begging you. Shut all the foolishness off. Know that he will protect you while you are purposefully and intentionally spending time with him. Because he already knows what's happening. I promise you he knows better than you do exactly what the enemy is up to. So the only way you can be victorious in this thing is if you plug yourself all the way into him. So we have to stop leaning to our own understanding. We have to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We have to acknowledge him in all of our ways and allow him to direct our path. We want him to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. My prayer for you is that you will be protected. My prayer for you is that you will decide to be intentional and commit yourself to this time, consecrating yourself to God, setting God apart in your heart.